to new best friends. You're gonna find a book you love to pieces. The girl behind the counter recommends dollar books and shelves of graphic novels. Titles old and new, you'll find them all. With action figures, board games, toys, and models to add to your new comic Wednesday haul. The comic book store. Hey there, welcome back to Source Material Live. I'm your host, the mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. And joining me tonight from the X Lapsed podcast and Claremont, from Claremont to Claremont, and the Cosmic Treadmill, and whatever the heck else he's doing these days. 90 different variants of x laps as near as I can tell. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Chris Sheehan. How do you do, sir? Hey, how are you? How are you? We're talking about big monsters again. This is the second show in a row we're doing big monsters, isn't it? That's right. Um, so Godzilla vs. Kong released in theaters uh, almost a week ago as hmm. of this recording. Who um, won? Um, Warner Brothers and Legendary. That's who won. Oh, okay, okay. They the, always win, damn it. And the theater chains. They won, too. They always um, win. Yep. So, yeah, Godzilla vs. Kong is out in the movies now and on HBO Max. We did a review of the movie last night on Damn You Hollywood. And we're moving on to other things in the Godzilla and Kong and Titan and Kaiju universe. Tonight we're talking about a comic book. And before I even get into this, Chris, let me tell you how, mm-hmm. how we got here. Because the whole thing was... Uh, back in the in, in the in the way back, Jesse and I had talked about well, we need a book to do that's Godzilla vs Kong, but there is no such Godzilla vs Kong book. There are no Kong vs Godzilla books. There are no books where they fought each other. There are some Kong books, and then there's a shit ton of Godzilla books out there. So I was like, well, what to do? What to do? So Jesse was like, we should do our first ever double book review. I'm like, okay, like we're gonna pick a Godzilla book and pick a Kong book. I think it was like Kong on the Planet of the Apes because yay crossovers. And then <laughs> we were gonna <laughs> we're gonna do. I think we might have actually thought about doing like this. The book we're gonna do tonight, which is Godzilla in Hell. Um, and we're gonna do them both. But then COVID hit, and Jesse was essential, and they moved Kong uh, Godzilla versus Kong nine thousand times. Like I, I think it was supposed to be released in nineteen seventy six. It's moved that many times. Mm-hmm. So um, the books changed. How I was gonna do it changed, and then something happened. I discovered that. The production company that made the movie, Legendary, also publishes their own tie-in comics. So for Godzilla King of the Monsters, they publish Godzilla Aftershock. And for Kong Skull Island, they published uh, like Birth of Kong or Birth of Kong Skull Island. I don't know, whatever the hell the book was called. Anyway, these, these were tie-in books for the movies put out by Legendary. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. We should do those books. And then an article came out not that long ago saying they were publishing two books that coincided directly with Godzilla versus Kong. I'm like, oh, well, if they're coming out timely, we should do those books, right? That makes sense, yeah? Hmm. Yeah? Sure, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> You're not with me. I get it. I understand. Only my, <laughs> I, only my brain thinks this way. But it made sense to me at the time. And um, then they moved the movie again. They, they, they moved it from wherever it was. They moved it back a month and a week and then a, a few days. And they just moved it all over the place. Meanwhile, the comics were supposed to be published on March 30th. And then that got delayed till today. And I went to go buy them online. And guess what's not available online? I wonder. Those particular comics. So I threw my hands up and said, I give fucking up with Legendary. And now I don't even want to do any of their other tie-in comics. And so tonight, we're just going to have fun, Chris. We're going to have... That mean we don't have to talk about a Godzilla book? No, we're going to have fun talking about a Godzilla book with zero dialogue. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Not since the Ultimate Warrior Christmas special has a book been this weird and rapey. Less mm-hmm. rapey than the Warrior book, but still kind of weird. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. From 2015, the five-part miniseries Godzilla in Hell. Actually, the first issue came out in July of 2015. And it's funny, James Stoko is listed as the artist and writer. Mm-hmm. There's no... <laughs> I would have yeah. accepted storyboarded. I would have... I Plot. Would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Choreography. Yeah. I would... I I cannot accept the word written. There's no... <laughs> there's nothing written in this comic. It's a series. We follow Godzilla through various levels of hell. Yeah. And we just see him do stuff, but there's no talking, there's no dialogue, there's barely any, like, narrator boxes. Yeah, tiny bits of narration here and there. Very, very purple. Very purple. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, not not a whole lot. Uh, there were a few screonks in there, but uh, yeah, not much more. So are you, like, a Godzilla guy or no? You don't seem like a Godzilla guy. No, no. I, I You know, that's funny. Um... The only thing that's ever interested me about Godzilla is, like, that stupid creepypasta online about the haunted Godzilla Nintendo game. That's, like, the only thing that's kind of interested me vaguely, and that's not even not even that great in itself. Okay, I'm going to uh, plug my mouse in to charge. I need to hear all about this haunted Nintendo game. Oh, dude, there are videos on it online. You can go to Reddit and find a bunch of stuff about it. It's It's interesting. It's uh, It, it kind of, like all, you know, scary stories on the internet, it kind of ends pretty lamely but uh <laughs> the lead up to get there is pretty neat and the uh the dedication that this writer like this writer actually created his own screenshots to uh and like his own pixel art to like put into the game and animate it and stuff a lot of work went into this and uh for that i respect it uh the story is is really it's it's weird it's a weird story but it ends in a you know in a way like a lot of these stories do end it's kind of the uh the most obvious sort of ending, but that was kind of interesting. Um, I tried getting into Godzilla through all thing of all things as uh, Sven Gulli. You know Sven Gulli? Only because a mutual acquaintance of ours, while I'm trying to watch fights on a Saturday night, will incessantly tag Sven Gulli to the point where I want to throw my phone into the backyard. <laughs> the wife and I were watching. Um, we were watching some of the Sven Gulli stuff. Uh, I probably, don't know what that is. What's that, Sven Gulli? Yeah, I don't know what Sven Gulli is. Oh, he is a uh, like a he's like an old school horror movie host, like they used to have back in the day. And he like like he Vincent Price like, or Elvira or the yeah, Keeper. Exactly, okay. exactly. Just like kind of silly, kind of hokey, kind of corny, but he hosts all the classic horror movies. Okay. So the wife and I were getting into that, trying to like watch some, you know, old black and white horror movies and stuff, and it was a pretty good time. And then they announced like for the month of March 2018, maybe 2019. It was a few years ago. The entire month of March, every Saturday was going to be a Godzilla movie. And I'm like, okay, well we'll try the first one, and we did, and it was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is boring. This is very boring. And, and so uh, this became his cultural icon, eh? <laughs> yeah, and uh and that was uh that was the last time we watched Sven Gulli too, I think. So it's we fell off the Sven Gulli wagon and never really got back on. All thanks to Godzilla. Yeah, that's that's funny. I talked about this on the Damn You Hollywood review of the movie that I was. I did not grow up with Godzilla. Godzilla was not one of those things I followed as a kid. I didn't watch the cartoon when that was a thing. I, I, I've, I used to this day haven't seen the first and last Godzilla movie. I, I shouldn't say the last. The first Godzilla movie I think I ever saw was the Roland Emmerich movie from the late '90s with Matthew Broderick and half the cast of The Simpsons. Okay, is that the one it? where uh, like the Wallflowers did that We Can Be Heroes remake from David Bowie? Maybe um, it's the one where Green Day re-released Brain Stew, I believe it was, with Godzilla screaming. It's also the oh. one where... Um, Is that before they decided they were political? Yes, way before. Oh, um, okay. My wife hates that. My wife, who's... We're going to see them this summer, cross, like, crossing my mm-hmm. fingers. Uh, and my wife and I both like the early Green Day stuff, but when they got... Yeah. But she absolutely hates the political stuff. Like oh, they, they did that one like rock opera with I guess it's the hand grenade or whatever, and she's like, and that's when she noped out. 
<laughs> yeah, anyway. I, I liked I liked Dookie, and that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the one I think I think it's it's around the time when they when they do the uh, uh, Good Riddance. Hope you had the time of your life. I think that album is is about the last one that I really enjoyed by them. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, that album, the, the big. The big single from the 1998, I believe, Godzilla album, uh, movie was Sean Puffy Combs oh, wow. um, doing Come With Me, where he sampled Led Zeppelin. You remember that? I think I do, yeah. I oh, think I do, here. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the uh, the, the sound. Yeah, there was the, 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 Her- the Heroes, the uh, remake of the Bowie song from the Wallflowers is on there. Yep. Yeah. It's it's very nineties. <laughs> it's Folds very five. Fine. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Folds five. When do you you never see those guys? Um, and now he's just Ben Folds if he's even doing anything at all. Um, mm-hmm. in any case, that was the very first Godzilla film I'd ever seen, and I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Jamiroquai. Um, Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, but what I've been told by Godzilla experts is it's a terrible movie, um, and it's the worst representation of Godzilla they've ever seen. Okay. Um, they tried something. Or they were getting jobbed out. <laughs> they tried something. They whiffed. They didn't capture the spirit of Godzilla. I saw the 2014 Godzilla. Um, I know people who love it. I think, think it's like the best Godzilla movie ever. Eh, it, it's fine. Um, someday I'll do a full review of it because that's the one. It's the one of that series we never did. It, mm-hmm. you know, it was right in that sweet spot when I wasn't reviewing movies, mm-hmm. and. <laughs> Um, same thing with King Kong. I've never seen the 33 one. I've never seen the 76 one. King Kong. i uh, never watched the cartoon. Never really been a King Kong fan. And I did see. I saw the 2005 Peter Jackson one. But. Um, eh. So. Isn't that like, where he, he fights a spider for like 45 minutes? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, in any case. So it's funny to be in like my mid 40s now. And like God's, you know, as I said on the podcast, Godzilla versus Kong has made me the happiest I've been since the Avengers movie came out. The the, the last one. Um, and and in, in, in many ways more so than that. So the point of all of this is I'm probably the le- one of the last people on Earth who needs to be reviewing a Godzilla book. But here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the other last guy who should be doing it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this will be an experience. All right, so mm-hmm. the so like I said, um, uh, 2015, and uh, every I think every issue had a different creative team on it. So this is Bobby Curno, who's the editor, James Soko, who's the artist cover and uh, cover artist and writer, uh, Sarah Richards did I think another part of the cover, um, and then we have Chris Mowry and Jeff Zarno, and the synopsis such as it is goes like this Godzilla meets his greatest adversary of all time the impossible torches of hell so yeah this is Dante's Inferno starring Godzilla you uh, just you just recap the entire issue there <laughs> each issue of the, the entire spe- story each issue of this special miniseries will see Godzilla enter a new level of the underworld to do battle with the impossible all right so issue number one art and story by James Stoko edits Bobby Curno creative consultant Chris Mowry and this is by IDW Publishing. All right. So we open with Godzilla uh, falling through the sky into hell. Mm-hmm. And it says Godzilla in hell. So now you know what book you're reading. Mm-hmm. Reading, in quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at. And he hits the dirt. And debris goes everywhere. And Godzilla gets up and he is nonplussed. And he's looking around like, what the hell, man? And in our only bit of written dialogue, such as it is in this entire affair... There is a stone edifice that says, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Which makes sense. It's hell. And what does Godzilla do, Chris? It it offends him greatly. He destroys it. (laughs) Yep. He uses his atomic breath, and down it goes. He's like, that's enough of that. Maybe he just noticed that there was actual words in the book, and he's like, wait a minute, I can't have that. (laughs) The fuck out of here with your learning, you nerds. This is Godzilla. We can't read. Come on. This is Godzilla. We ain't got time for book learning, you fancy pants. (laughs) <laughs> and so Godzilla <clears throat> goes traipsing about and he sees this cross between a Martian landscape and an industrial village I don't know what this is Yeah, I, but I, I do want to say the art here is pretty fantastic um, yes so we're not we're not ragging on every bit of the creative process here the art here is lovely oh no yeah if you're if you're a person who I, I, I own 
if you're a person who is a is an actual artist, a visual artist, a painter of some kind, um, you know, if you're like a Ben Cologne, if you're an Alexis Haina, you're you're somebody who's you know, a graphic designer, um, you should love this book. I actually had Winfrey re- read it today because I wanted to get his opinion on it, and he was like, "Well, it's a bit thin." But the art is lovely. <laughs> Two and a half minutes later, he wrote back and said, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. "So I'm done now, and <laughs> this is an artfully done coloring book." Anyway, um, so Godzilla stomps up to one of the smokestacks, and a Cthulhu creature pops out. Yeah, some sort of a Lovecraftian horror. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Godzilla makes short work of it, and he mm-hmm. fucks off. And he sees yep. this cloud short, uh, just lightly above ground, and he growls at it because he's Godzilla. And it, the cloud is made up of people. It's made of people! And it engulfs mm-hmm. him. And he's drowning in people. Yep. <laughs> and he gets out of it. And he looks across the way and he sees what appears to be yet another Godzilla. This one a bit scratched up. Darker and battle damaged, yeah. Yeah, a little worse for wear. And like any good superhero movie, he has to fight himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he does. And he bites him. But trickery is afoot. This particular iteration of Godzilla sprouts all kinds of teeth and tentacles and claws and all kinds of nastiness. This is gross, Chris. It is. And it turns into some sort of alien horror and it starts to wrap up Godzilla and toss him about and it just pounds him into mush and Godzilla hits it with its atomic breath and it dies. And wins, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of Godzilla for you. And it hits LOL it. Godzilla wins, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> um, but wait like a good horror monster it resurrects and comes back to life and now looks even more horrifying now it looks like the Sarlacc from Return of the Jedi mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do you know what that is? that's the hole yes, with teeth the toothy Boba Fett. spoiler yep. alert <laughs> it's from 1987 <laughs> um, and it uh, draws it draws Godzilla into its maw and he chews him up but it's Godzilla, and so he yells, and it da, explodes. Da, da, da. <laughs> he kipped out. He kipped up, um, and then the Earth swallows him whole, and he drops down to another level of hell. And that is the end of the exciting issue one. What did you think of issue one? <sighs> um, <laughs> you know, it was it was a, it's a beautiful book here. The artist involved here was a screw. What's his name? I was going to say something untoward. What? There he is. Uh, very, very gifted artist here. Um, this, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I don't want to bury the lead here, but this is a five-issue story that didn't need five pages, much less however many we've got here. Um, I think it's an interesting idea. I think the idea of what if we... And, and it's funny because... Um, People have been saying the, the MonsterVerse movies that have been coming out have success has successively minimized the human characters and the human drama, and mm-hmm. can, and more focused on the monsters, which is why everyone goes to begin with. So in so with Godzilla twenty fourteen, you had a lot of human beings and people didn't like it, and in Godzilla vs Kong three movies later, you have almost no human drama and no human characters, and people loved it. To which somebody on Twitter was like, why can't we just have a Godzilla Kong movie with no humans and no human drama and it be a silent film? Not silent like there's no sound at all, sure. but like no, no dialogue. dialogue. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of think like, you know, people are saying that now and this precedes this by six years, but I think like they're experimenting with that idea. What if you took this uh, this character who does not speak any traditional language and put him in these various perils and what is that like? And I think it's an interesting idea. I'm not sure if it was You can do that, that in film. That You can yeah. definitely do that in film because there's action, there's movement, there's sound, there's just... There, there's explosions, there's all this stuff. In a mm. comic book, though, it doesn't work. 
it, but, it's a comic, you know, by definition is a little bit more static than a film. Right. And to just like watch Godzilla lumber around. <laughs> I, I mean, I think you need the human element in a, if you're going to do a, like, like we read with uh, the, the, what the hell was it? The Pacific Rim. Yeah. That's a story about humans dealing with these monsters here. If you want to make Godzilla the star of it, then maybe present. I mean, you can't do it with this hell book, but I mean, have him protecting people, have him well, attacking I think, people. Just I, I think a way to have done that would have been have him taunted by Satan. Sure, do anything just and make it one issue long. Yeah, I, they're charging four dollars for this. There are no words in it. It's four dollars. You spend four fucking dollars, and you spend. I mean, there's there's no exaggeration here. I read all five of these issues today in less than fifteen minutes. Yep. I yeah. mean, there's not a dollar for entertainment uh, ratio <laughs> there that's uh, favorable. No matter how nice it looks, but right. I mean, I could buy a painting. I right. could buy a print. I, I don't need this in in sequential art because it's barely that. I think like maybe like a double size standard average comic with really nice paper, like you know fine, smooth paper, um, and and really then focus on the art, and then we're done with this. Yeah, and then maybe have someone antagonizing him. You know, you will repent. For, I mean, they do this kind of later with the pixies. We'll get to it. But yeah. you know, it's like you will repent for your sins, Godzilla. You will answer for the people and the things you have hurt. Um, Does Godzilla have a conscience? Right. I, does, is, does he have humanity, or is he just a force of nature? Um, I, I mean, it depends on your interpretation. There, there have been various interpretations of Godzilla. Clearly, the, the earliest interpretation of Godzilla is he's a metaphor for the atomic bomb and the destruction sure. of the U.S. war machine. Um, other, you know, others have him... He's, he's an animal, doing animal things. Others have him as you know being driven by you know his alpha alpha predatorness mm -hmm. um so you know it really depends on how you see it. now i haven't read like the marvel godzilla books and mm -hmm. you know these various other companies that have done multiple volumes of godzilla stories so maybe in some of these he talks i don't <laughs> i read a little bit of the marvel one and it's uh it stars scientists for a good mm -hmm. portion of it because uh, uh, one of the scientists from that was uh was actually part of the X Men science team like ten years ago, which which was a weird callback to a book that people didn't realize was like in continuity. I'm so I, happy I you're on this show to point that out that the X Men guy was like, yeah, well, there's a character in a Godzilla book that's also in the X Men books. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this Godzilla book that we just talked about sold fifteen thousand copies or shipped fifteen thousand copies. So I don't know if that's good numbers for IDW in 2015, but uh. <laughs> It doesn't seem more, like good numbers overall. Doesn't is that more or less than Marvel? Uh, that is, I I want to say that's less than Marvel. <laughs> God, yeah. I don't see how they made money on this. Um, all right, issue number two: Godzilla descends further into the pit. Godzilla navigates a city that can never be destroyed as demonic versions of his greatest foes wait for the perfect moment to strike. So yeah, this is Godzilla, King of the Monsters in Hell. Alrighty. Uh, we open up our book here. Now, this is a different group of people. This is Art and Story by Bob Eggleton. Editor stays the same. It's Bobby Kernow. And letterer's creative consultant is Chris Mowry. All righty. Now, here, we actually get some dialogue. Uh, not dialogue, but we get some narration boxes. Um, this is probably my favorite issue for this reason, because at least this felt like a comic book. And these are also... Mm -hmm. these are all, This is also some of the best art in the book. These are yeah, beautifully it's painted. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, this is the first time I really feel like he's in hell. By the way, this issue, because everything else just feels like he's in weird, like nightmare science, Bo, like science, yeah, science fiction land. Like this mm -hmm. feels like he's he's really walking through Dante's Inferno. Yeah. Um, the Leviathan Godzilla wakes within a hellish landscape, the abysmal plain of the underworld, presenting all which has failed or gone wrong. Once great cities in ruins, industrial disasters run amok. And the familiar unearthly fire of man rends the sky with colossal mushrooms. Countless lost souls have been hurled, not as participants, but as witnesses, into a crumbling and hopeless void. This is not his final destination. 
but a journey, a test. Okay, all right. You hooked me, book. The Abyss, Godzilla, in hell. A really beautiful painting, I have to say again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there were giants in the earth in those days, lost, possessed effigies of great kaiju, the demon Rodan, with his great wings, once a monster of the clear blue skies, yet here in this underworld he is other. And so we see Rodan in the eye of Godzilla, leathery wings remorselessly fan the fire and heat as he rises to do battle. And Godzilla hits him with his atomic breath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and he misses. He misses Rodan. Rodan's too fast for him. Um, so what do you think this is? Like charcoal? What, do you, what kind of painting do you think this is? You know, I don't know. It looks kind of. It, it looks kind of like a pencil, like a like like a probably charcoal. You're probably right. Yeah, it's either charcoal or watercolors. Mm. Um. Who soars into the ash cloud and zooms back for another attack. What is this demon besieging him for? And again, the winged one returns for another attack. The leviathan uses pure brute strength as his assailant blunders within reach. And then we get a sound effect. Schwack! As Rodan takes a tail of the face. And down he goes, like an airplane. Spinning wildly, the great winged demon crashes into one of the doomed cities. Ruination upon ruination, ashes and dust. The Leviathan senses chilling light, another void in this arena of the underworld. A colder one, much colder. And so Godzilla fucks off into the cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> An eternity of ice and frozen devastation, another tribulation, and yet something stirs. Oh no, big slim dog. And boom, it's King Ghidorah. No, that's not King Ghidorah. This one... That's the fuck's this thing's name. Um, Angurus. Which is like like a type of spiny dinosaur type thing. Mm-hmm. And they fight. And fight. And fight. That's and what fight, they do. Fight. Yeah. <laughs> a battle rages. A battle with silent witnesses. And Angurus takes a bite of Godzilla. No, wait. The f no, yeah, he bit him. Yeah. <laughs> And then Godzilla's like, don't bite me. And he flings the... He flings him. Like, get off. Stupid. Yep, snap mare. Uh, and he throws him into the ice. But Godzilla, too heavy for the ice he's standing on, falls through again into a new realm of hell. The deluge. The eternal ocean. The leviathan the watery arrives. Hell. Yes. <laughs> and raises the stormy wind, lifting up the waves of the sea from treacherous depths where the new demon lurk. Emerges the demon Varan, and they fight and fight and fight and fight and fight, fight fight mm -hmm. fight 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 fight. <sighs> this is like that uh, that Bruce Lee movie where he like climbs up the the temple, right? Yeah, just just in reverse. All right, so he dunks him in the water, and that's the end of him. But ah, here he is, King Ghidorah, the the, the star, the villain, the antagonist of King of the Monsters, the crux of it all. The reason the Leviathan was brought into this horrific netherworld. King Ghidorah, the great three-headed dragon, the golden devil that materializes from the blinding light. And they fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. <laughs> fight, 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 and Godzilla goes into a whirlpool. And that's the yep. end. So, high marks for the art. It's the best art of the entire series. It's very nice. Um... I enjoyed the narration. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought it actually added to the book. I wish there was more of this, but I guess how many different ways can you say they fight and fight yeah. and fight and fight and fight? And it was a little up its own ass. <laughs> the, <laughs> the the narration was a little purple. A little, a little. All right, issue number three. Uh, and this is September of 2015. What brought Godzilla to hell? A glimpse of Godzilla's greatest battle gives clues. But what will happen when Godzilla faces a rematch with the same foe in the underworld? Yeah, I think this is where it started to lose me. Yeah. Um, this one gets really weird, if I remember correctly. Um, also, the art's a little on the juvenile side. This feels like something... 
I, content wise, it's not something I would want my my seven year old to read. But looks wise, I'm like, this seems like a book for you. Okay. So this is Ulysses Farinas and Eric Fritas, art by Buster Moody, color assist by Ludwig Laguna Alimba, edits by Barbara Kerno, and then letters and creative song Chris Maori. All right, and so we see a city of flame with rock and roll. And stuff's flying out of the sky. And oh, there he is at Space Godzilla. With crystals coming out of his back and crystals coming out of his tail. And he shops at Zales. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The diamond God. store. That's right. Space Godzilla. With a little Frenchy fiery thing on his head. And Godzilla hits him with his atomic breath. And I guess the artist is trying to tell us something by having them fight where they are. What is that called again? Do you know what, what that statue is? It's got a very famous name. The Christ the Redeemer? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, they're in, uh, where is that? Uh, Brazil? Brazil, yeah. Rio, maybe? Oh. Yep, which is where all the good fights, mixed martial arts take place in Brazil. That's where uh, some wrestling matches uh, well, we're going to be talking about in a few days took place. <laughs> Did they really? In Brazil? Oh, they they were jumping off the Christ the Redeemer statue. <laughs> All right, so we get a pan out shot, and we see the Earth just you know hanging out in space, and then we're back down on the ground again, and they're they're fussing and a fighting. They are they are actually what they are doing is they are powering up, mm-hmm. like they are Power Ranger monsters or Dragon Ball characters. Yeah, any uh, and the space. Space Gods, I should be high while reading this. Space Godzilla. I'm not sure we're not. <laughs> powers up so much, he blows up the statue. The uh, Christ Redeemer? Uh, Cristo de Redimo. Okay. And uh, Space Godzilla hits him with his electric fire breath. His electric fire breath. His electric fire breath. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Godzilla yep. and Space Godzilla get into a collar and elbow tie up. Mm-hmm. What a maneuver! <laughs> and Godzilla hits him with his atomic breath. And Back dies. body drop. <laughs> and of course he dies. And then Godzilla, uh, having fucked up and, and used too much of his atomic breath, setting up everything on fire, sets himself on fire, and he burns. And mm-hmm. so what does he do to put himself? Does he stop, drop, and roll? Does he dive into the drink? He hits him with his atomic breath. Yep. And everything goes purple and blows up all atomically. And the Earth explodes. The Earth Everyone is dies. done. Yep. yep. It's gone. Well, we had a pretty good run. Yep. We always knew it would be a giant lizard would be our undoing in the end. That's what they say. And so Godzilla wakes up. And uh, an army of shield-wielding, sword-carrying pixies confront him. I think one of them's Hawkman, and he's going to die. <laughs> hey Callback. <laughs> well done. And they take him to this living mountain. Kind of looks like the trash heap from Fraggle Rock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Godzilla's looking at it. And it and looks back. And it looks back. And oh, we get some dialogue. Okay? We get very deep, meaningful, uh, thematic dialogue here, Chris. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Submit. Serve peace. Submit. Serve peace. Submit. Serve peace. Tastes great. Less filling. Mm-hmm. And Godzilla looks at it. And it looks back at him. And he kills a bug. That's <laughs> it. Just squashes it. Just I think squash- that was Hulkman. <laughs> just squashes one of the pixies. And having not convinced Godzilla to submit and serve peace, they continue to do so. Serve peace, submit, serve peace, submit. You mustn't defy peace. You shall learn to submit to peace. Don't you understand, Godzilla? It is better to be peaceful than it is to make war. You atomic metaphor, you. Mm -hmm. And the mountain gives off purple fire waves and knocks Godzilla down a hole. And he does that a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on here. It says, submit to peace. <laughs> and Godzilla falls to another level of hell. And he's on ice again of some sort. But uh, like Space Godzilla's underneath the ice. 
And he says, oh, mwah, mwah. Someday my kid's going to listen to it while he's sleeping, and that's going to wake him up. Um, <laughs> welcome to hell. Uh, welcome to hell. Welcome to hell. Repetitive, isn't it? Welcome to hell. Consume his heart. Enter its throat. Sounds like that line's from a porno. Um, mm-hmm. Welcome to hell. Consume his heart. Enter its throat. The pixies are saying. Now they look kind of like bats. And so Godzilla eats them. He <laughs> just starts just start eating the bats. Eat the little, he's eating the little bats. And the space Godzilla's like, why does nothing affect you? Why are you so nonplussed by everything? And he jumps on him and he attacks him and he tackles him. And a hand comes from the ice and grabs him. And now he's trying to choke him with the bats. And there's another explosion. And out come the pixie fairy warrior dudes. Serve us! Submit to us! Join our army! And they dive into Godzilla's mouth and Godzilla eats them. Mm-hmm. And then he gets hit with the lightning fire from Space Godzilla. And Godzilla, who sells nothing, like he's fucking the ultimate warrior, it's just nothing at all. Nothing affects him. Attack no. Space Godzilla, who's like, what the fuck, man? And he shatters his little crystals. But he hits him with the fire lightning again and it bounces off Godzilla because now he has a shield like because remember when you were a little kid like I shot you well I have a personal shield mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you keep up in the ante well no it was a it was a this one goes through shields like well no I have this shield too right oh, oh but now you're standing in lava no no I'm wearing uh, I'm wearing lava defying boots oh just yep. get the hell out of here <laughs> I'm gonna go inside watch westerns with my dad yeah <laughs> <laughs> And so his fire lightning bounces off of Godzilla and hits him, and he explodes. And the space Godzilla guts everywhere. Gross. Mm-hmm. And so the pixies say, well, we helped. <laughs> they did. They must have given him the shield is what happened. He says, now that we aided you in your victory against space Godzilla. By the way, I didn't know that's what he was called. And I, like I said, I don't know a lot of the monsters in, in the MonsterVerse. You know, I've heard some stuff through, you know, time and just, you know, the popularity of it all. But I, I, you know, there are certain things I don't know. So when I saw him, I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. And I didn't feel like looking it up. I just wanted to finish the book. And then I saw this line. We helped you in your, we aided you in your victory against Space Godzilla. Almost fell in my chair laughing. Yup. (laughs) Fucking Space Godzilla. (laughs) Who wrote this? An (laughs) eight-year-old? You shall serve us in our battle against hell. Serve peace, submit, serve peace, and Godzilla fucks off. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Godzilla rejects this entire premise, and he hits it with his atomic breath. Uh, And so they were like, our... And so they they, they do a Daffy Duck in the Robin Hood Daffy cartoon. All right, uh, you don't have to join us. We'll join you. Shake hands with Friar Duck. We submit, Godzilla. You are the one we worship. And then he just bites him and eats him. Dude. And that's the end. Issue number three, Chris. Oh, jeez. <laughs> mm. you know, sometimes the world looks perfect. Nothing to rearrange. Sometimes you just get a feeling like you need some kind of change. No matter what the odds are this time, nothing is going to stand in my way. Not this flame in my heart, like a long lost friend, gives every dark street a light at the end. <laughs> uh, Godzilla. Whoa, whoa, they say he's got to go, 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 Godzilla. For you listeners of the Source Material Live podcast, we're sorry. <laughs> and the Rattling and Broadcasting Network on W2M. Grammarly is offering a free download of the Grammarly software. Grammarly's AI-powered products help people communicate more effectively. Grammarly helps you write mistake-free on Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and nearly anywhere else you write on the web. (laughs) Grammarly corrects hundreds of grammar, punctuation, and spelling mistakes while also catching contextual errors, improving your vocabulary, and suggesting style improvements. Download Grammarly today. Go to getgrammarly.com slash W2M network. Again, that's getgrammarly.com slash W2M network to download Grammarly for more. Do you think they uh, they help when you don't use words? 
<laughs> I was thinking, I don't know how much Grammarly would have helped you with this book. Yeah. Maybe it might have helped you find, like, you know, sound words and stuff. Could know, like be. Screonk. Could be. Yeah. And shaboom. And mar. <laughs> we need the onomatopoeia in here. Thank you. Couldn't remember the uh, thing there. Godzilla's journey is stymied in issue number four by an impenetrable wall of living flesh, like you do. Cornered with nowhere to go, he is beset by devilish versions of his greatest foes. Didn't we do this already? I thought we already been here. <laughs> Destroyer. Zoya, the Destroyer. No, wait, that's from Glow. And King Ghidorah, who we already saw in the issue before, in the, in the second issue. What the fuck, like thrice. man? Yeah. Now we're using the same gimmicks over and over again. Goddamn, pal. Mm-hmm. It hasn't even been seven years yet. All right. Issue number four, written by, written, in quotes, by Brandon Seifert. Uh, art by Ibrahim Mustafa, who I believe used to come out with <laughs> Muhammad Hussein in the WWE. Um, <laughs> colors by Marissa Luis and the rest of our usual creative team. All right, there's your Skryonk that you were talking about. There it is. Uh, Godzilla's just mucking about, and he's standing on top of his foes, his defeated foes, King Ghidorah and the other dude. But they come back to life. They kip up. They go, reek, kreek, reek, kreek. And Godzilla turns around and is like, fuck off. And they have a laser fight. <laughs> they are all breathing some sort of hmm. weaponish breath. Yep. One purple, yellow, and blue atomic. And finally, the, the bat-looking dinosaur thing gives up, and he gets hit in the face. And then Godzilla goes after Ghidorah. Ghidorah tries to stomp on him. Now I'm doing commentary <laughs> for the fight. Oh, boy. Um, they start destroying the city around them like you do when you're a big kaiju. Uh, Ghidorah grabs Godzilla and he takes him into the air and he drops him. And Godzilla is impaled on what looks to be the space needle. But Godzilla gets better. <laughs> Almost immediately. Yep. And he breathes atomic fire. But then that head wing dinosaur guy <laughs> comes down and he kicks Godzilla. And Chris, what does he do next? He wins. He hits him with his atomic breath. So if you want to play a drinking game, start this podcast over again. And every time I say he hits him with his atomic breath, take a drink and we'll see you at the hospital for detox. Mm -hmm. All right. So Godzilla wins, like you said, but he's beset upon by what look like the Insecticons from the Transformers. And he looks down and he sees a severed head, his own severed head. And he looks up and he's like, what the fuck, man? This is a Godzilla book. Why are we doing surreal? And Because we have pages to fill, pal. Oh, but the monsters are back. We've got Ghidorah, who's wrapping him up and biting him in the neck, and then the other dude's biting him on the shoulder, and down goes Godzilla. And then something... Oh, and well, then they start fighting amongst themselves, it looks like. Like, arguing over his corpse. Um... Oh, and then they all... T then they all team up, because they decide they're going to take down this wall. Okay. And mm -hmm. so they knock a hole in and they cross into West Germany. <laughs> They've been looking for freedom. Yeah. And that's the end of issue four. Really, we, we really peaked with, number, with issue number two. This, this has gotten monotonous. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, we talked about how quickly this read. It was still boring, <laughs> despite <laughs> the fact that it was quick. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of done with this after the second one. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's a neat idea, but you have to... You're reusing the same enemies in multiple issues, that's a huge mistake. This needed to be... Every issue needed to be distinctly different with no repetition for it to work. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just... This, isn't, this doesn't need so many pages here. I, I don't know how they sold this, if they sold it as, like, a an artist showcase. If that's the case, then sure. Okay, fine. 
Um, I don't think it lends itself to critique. Um, but as an artist showcase where if this was produced, it's like we have five five issues from these fantastic artists who are going to give their own spin on this. I mean, it is what it is. When we talk, and also, I mean, we had a good laugh out of it. When we talked about the Ultimate Warrior thing, it was, here are a dozen or so interpretations of the Ultimate Warrior and his wild and manic fantasies about Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I think had it been that, it was not a, not a story, but kind of impressions of Godzilla in hell done by different artists, and that's just the book. It's a picture book of different interpretations of Godzilla in hell. Okay, I'm, I'm, think, I'm yeah, good I'm with that's that. What it, yeah, I think that's what it, it's supposed to have been. <laughs> because, uh, cause like you said, we have these repeating, uh, these, these repetitive villains, or I guess opponents, where maybe just the different artists wanted to have their own spin on Space Godzilla or Megagon or whatever the hell a gun it is. <laughs> um, I, there's, there's no reason for this to exist other than that. Yeah. Um, re-edit this, take the story out of it, change up the art a little bit, and make it a coffee table book. That I think you there you something. go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a print book. Yeah. Godzilla's final foray into the depths of hell will prove to be his most challenging yet. There hasn't been much of a challenge thus far. He died. Excuse me. He died and got better immediately. Mm-hmm. Will Godzilla be able to find his way back to the living world? An unstoppable force unlike any other has seen bars his way. Terrific. And this thing wraps up in this final issue here in November of 2015. So, Godzilla in Hell, issue number five, written and illustrated, written, by Mm -hmm. Dave Wachter. Alrighty, and so Godzilla's traipsing through limbo, it looks like. And a a snowflake falls, and suddenly it's winter. Winter has come. And he's freezing. But then it's hot. And lava-y. And hellish. So now he's hot. And he walks across a stone bridge. But it cracks. And he falls. And he's on land again. And he knocks a bunch of stalagmites over. And he fucks off. (laughs) And out of the wood are these eyeless bat Things. things, yeah, yeah, and they come out of the wood and they start to bite Godzilla. They swarm him, Christian. They swarm him, and he Godzilla eat yells it up at good. him. Yeah. Yep, and Godzilla yells at him, and there's something in the mountains, and it's looking at Godzilla and it's bemused. And a rock slide lands on Godzilla. People are gonna be like, "Is he just making this shit up?" Nope. No, this is all too real. And so he falls in a lock, uh, down the side of the mountain and rocks fall on top of his head. And always be set again by the... <sighs> things. <laughs> the, the toothy, eyeless bat things. Yes. And then Godzilla's like, all right. And he stands up and he's like, come at me, bro. And so they do. They do. And they start biting Godzilla. And they eat his flesh. And they eat his muscle. And he has nothing left but a pile of bones. Bones, Christian. And he, the mm-hmm. bones fall down. But Godzilla, even in death and in a million pieces, is too much for da, these da, da, da. And they cough him back out because they can't hold him down. And so they vomit Godzilla's skin back up, and it takes its form over the skeleton again. Mm-hmm. And God, Godzilla is now made up of these things. And then he takes a bath, and now he's fine. It's a cool visual. It's a cool visual. Yeah, it's all right. Doesn't make sense, but it's a cool visual. Yeah. This is clearly written while on acid. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think it's been read while it's on acid. <laughs> yeah. Can we do this? Can we start this podcast? I'm going to delete this. Can we start this over again, but let's trip balls and then do it? <laughs> I'm going to smack myself with a frying pan many, many times. <laughs> Go ask your wife if she can quick run to the corner store and get you LSD. Yes, can I have a bag of that, please? (laughs) I'm going to go to a marijuana dispensary. Can I door dash that? (laughs) I'm going to go to the local marijuana dispensary here in Florida and get fucked up. And then we'll come back and do this again. It'll be a much better book. 
Oh boy. Uh, don't do drugs, kids. Um, did you know, Christian, hmm. of X lapsed and of, from Claremont to Claremont and the cosmic treadmill, that it is better to conquer yourself than to win I hear. a thousand battles. I hear someone famous said that once. Then, and only then, Christian, mm-hmm. the victory is yours. It cannot be taken from you. No, sir. Not by angels or demons. Heaven or hell, says the Buddha. And I know that I because that, it says it on the page. I thought that, I, I, I really thought that was a tenant of destrucity for a second. <laughs> Uh, you're right. I, it says, it cannot be taken from you, not by angels or demons, heaven or hell, queer and don't make the world work. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and you tell that big sack of shit that told you Santa Claus wasn't real. <laughs> you take the two pilots, don't you understand? <laughs> um, and so Godzilla escapes hell. And he, uh, and he ra- raises from the water, and that is the end of Godzilla in Hell. And the first comment on the site that I'm reading this off of is, beautiful mm-hmm. but beautiful book, but what the fuck? Yeah, I'm looking at a uh, Godzilla wiki right now, and uh, I've got, overall, while not what I initially expected the miniseries would be, this was a fantastic journey to go on alongside Goji. Definitely a must-have. The concept is fantastic. The concept alone is fantastic enough to warrant a quick page flipping at the comic shop to see what it has in store. Side note: I think it's screonking hilarious that the comic got featured on the official site of the Church of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I, I really want to pitch this to Legendary. They're, like they, when they decided to to take their movie property from Universal to Warner Brothers. And they decided that they wanted to do a kaiju cinematic universe uh, because the Avengers had made a lot of money. And everyone was like, do, do fucking that, man. Um, so now everyone's doing cinematic universes. They were all the rage at one point. Um, we almost got, had they, comp- had they done it competently and it made money, we almost got a universal monster cinematic universe with like Dracula and the Mummy and shit like that. Anyway, um, when they conceptualized... What Did is now Costello known? meet them still? <laughs> I hope so. I hope that's mm-hmm. that that would have been their Avengers. There um, is. When they conceptualized what is now known as the MonsterVerse, which is the, you know the Lame. kaiju, the, tit- the, the Titans, Godzilla, etc. Um, so we just throw verse on the end of things, like we throw gate on the end of words, right? <laughs> yep. That's 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 the peak of creativity. Uh, this is this is the uh, Chris verse. Yeah, <laughs> that's you right. Go. You are living in the Rattlers verse. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> so as Marvel's long-term plan was to create individual movies of different Avengers and, you know, in their own standalone stories, but then bring them together to face a common enemy uh, in an Avengers movie, and that was so wildly successful it changed film forever, um, so too did they conceptualize the MonsterVerse as right as ending with Godzilla versus Kong. And so th- there may be some ideas on the table, but the point that I'm getting to is that the people at Legendary and the you know, producers and developers of this film series hadn't really planned to go past Godzilla versus Kong. But there's a, currently a hashtag movement. When people aren't trying to restore the Snyderverse or get Josh Whedon... And Joth Whedon, Joth Whedon, oh, no. and Jeff Johns fired from life. Um, <laughs> the other thing that's very popular right now is continuing the MonsterVerse, and so that was a long, winding way to get to this. I want to pitch this as a movie. I want to see Godzilla in Hell, but I want it ten thousand BC style. And let's develop this a little bit more, and let's not use the same fucking villains over and over and over again. So, like, Zombie Ghidorah you do once, but once he beats Zombie Ghidorah, don't do it again. And let's really What if play... we have, like, a, in each, like, 20-minute p- bit of this film, it's different special effects artists, mm-hmm. and they all want to do Ghidorah? The answer is no. Somebody has to be <laughs> a fucking adult. No, no, no that, that, that's, that, that's hate speech. 
Um, <laughs> have you heard uh, about the racist actually, trees? Speaking of hate speech, huh? have you heard about the racist trees? Speaking of hate speech, no. Okay, so in Portland, I mm. believe it is, a school decided to change its mascot like you do. Okay. I don't know what it once was. I don't know if it was like an offensive Native American or anything like that, um, or some sort of stereotype. But whatever it won, if it's like schools in Arizona, they're all Mustangs. <laughs> every school out here is every, the Mustangs. Every, every everyone's a horse, eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So whatever whatever this mascot once was, they decided it shall not be any longer, mm-hmm. and they are taking and they, and they are taking ideas as to what this mascot should be. And somebody said, "We live in a very woody forestry state." We live mm-hmm. in a place with a lot of trees, and trees give life. They give oxygen. This is what we know about trees, that without them, we would all die because there would be no air on this planet, right? Gotcha. Trees are a good thing. I think we can all agree on that. Mm-hmm. Somebody raised an objection. I don't remember oh, what, no. her, what this person's name was, but one person who we'll just call the Lorax and spoke for the trees said, okay, but what if you're black? And you look at a tree, and you associate it with lynchings. Do we want to have a mascot that some people might associate with lynchings and feel triggered and hurt? And um, you know, is that something? Is that is, is that a thorny pile of nonsense we really want to get ourselves wrapped up in? Oh boy. And so they delayed a vote on what the mascot should be so that they could have a discussion about whether the nature of trees will trigger some people to envision lynchings. So we should just cancel Arbor Day right now. <laughs> yeah. You, you fuck that right out of there. Oh, boy. Call it something Eddie else. Albert. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We, we, Columbus Day is now something else, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it's Indigenous People Day, Indigenous Persons Day, something like yeah. that. Um, so yeah, so that's gone, and we need to now turn Arbor Day into something else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Godzilla in Hell. I want to see the movie. What do you think? Th- this this is. Well, I wouldn't see it, but uh, <laughs> um, you don't see anything. That doesn't matter. I don't see any movies, but I'm here on this Godzilla fan site, and someone Toon King 1985 said, "Am I the only one?" And before I even finish the sentence. Am I the only one who hates it when motherfuckers use am I the only one to start a sentence? <laughs> you're never the only one there, sunshine. It, you're, not, you're, you're not that unique. You're not that special. But, Statistically, uh, you're in a world of billions of people. You can't possibly be the only one doing anything. Exactly. And it's right up there with, is it just me? Yeah, it's it, just you. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's not fuckface. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Toon King wants to know if he's the only one, or if they are the only one who thinks Godzilla in Hell could possibly be inspired by the rumored unmade film Godzilla vs. the Devil. I really thought that sentence was going to end with Godzilla vs. Bambi. I wish. Have you that ever seen I might that? see. Have you ever seen the short film Godzilla vs. Bambi? No. no. You've never seen Godzilla vs. Bambi? Still no. You've never... All right. Um, <laughs> hang on. Godzilla versus Bambi. Zombie Jiger says, Really? This is just as bad as or worse than the Ultraman anime girl project thing. Uh, Jesus Christ. Everything is an ad. I'm going to send you something real quick. We're going to watch okay. this together. Cool. Right, and then we're going to end the show. Okay. Um, you Zach want me to send it to you? replies with... It, how is this bad exactly? We're getting more Godzilla comics. Oh. Do you want me to send it to you in Twitter? Sure. Okay. All right. Here you go. Get right. over there. Tell me when you press play. And I'm going to mute this because I don't need to hear the stupid Falcon and the Winter Soldier commercial. Ad block. Use ad block. <laughs> All right. I'm skipping. Tell me when you're ready, and we'll hit play at the same time. Okay, I am... Come on, don't start yet. Come on, go back. I'm rolling it back to zero. And Bambi meets Godzilla, 1969 HQ. Okay, Okay. three, two, one, play. All right. All right, and uh, we see Bambi. Bambi. And there's little Bambi, and there's our title credits. Bambi meets Godzilla. 
and he's just eating a little grass. Surrounded by flowers. Yeah. yeah. This is written by Mary Newland. Yeah. Marv Newland. Hey, Marv. Yeah. No, no, Mary would ever write this. No, no. But Marv Screen- definitely would. I think so. All right. Screenplay. Screenplay same Mar- dude. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Marv Newland. Bambi looks like maybe he's itchy. Is Bambi a boy or a girl? Uh, it's a boy. Bambi oh. grew up to be a, a boy. Bambi's with... wardrobe was supplied by Marv. Okay. I'm st- I'm starting to think this is a comedy. Um, <laughs> Marv was produced by his parents. That's good. <laughs> Down comes go. Godzilla's foot. Dun, and dun, poor, dun. <laughs> poor Bambi is crushed. Crushed, I tell you. Poor Bambi didn't even see it coming. The end. No. Uh, what, are you, is, there, is there an after credits uh, sequence? <laughs> <laughs> Where they resurrect Bambi? <laughs> <laughs> we, we gratefully acknowledge the city of Tokyo. Because of course we do. Of course. I mean, Tokyo's a real thing, right? For their help in obtaining Godzilla for this film. (laughs) I think Godzilla in Hell has to reference Bambi versus Godzilla, where, like, Bambi gets revenge. And I actually think there is a Bambi... uh, Bambi's revenge on Godzilla film. Oh, boy. Let's see here. Here is indie animation pioneer Marv Newland's original Bambi meets Godzilla, just as he drew it for less than... $300. $300. He spent $300 on this? <laughs> well, he had to animate it. In, in 1969? Okay. Isn't that like like $4 billion today? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If you if you pitched a Bambi meets Godzilla movie in today's film environment, you would absolutely at least get $200 million. <laughs> Now, is, is Bambi owned by Disney, or is Bambi, like, its own thing that Disney just co-opted? I, I'd have to do some research. I mean, Bambi is obviously a Disney movie, which mm-hmm. has probably been scrubbed by Disney+, Plus because God knows we can't show sadness. We can't show <laughs> violence. Um, there, might be, there might even be something racist in Bambi. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. It's possible. Um, I know, like, half of, like, the Disney... They were like, hey, we're going to put the streaming app together. We're going to shove it full of all the Disney stuff. Yeah, half your shit's racist. Uh, fuck us. <laughs> now, uh, Mr. Marv Newland would have spent $2,149.98 today on that film. Okay. Well worth it. Well worth I it. I think so. Chris, this has been fun. I always enjoy has talking it? to you. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoy talking to you. Um, I, uh, I, we had a fun little discussion here with the silly, stupid book. What sure. do you say we, we we call it a night? I think we should tap out. All right, go ahead and do your plugs. Sure, sure. You could find me if, <laughs> for any reason you might want to, over at uh, chrisandreggie.podbean.com and Chris is on infinite earth.com. Still doing X lapsed and uh, variations of X lapsed. Uh, got 161 episodes of the main show out. Uh, the weekends see a show called Generation X lapsed, where I'm looking at the unfortunate volume two of Generation X from around 2017. One of the books that led to me actually running for the hills away from the X-Men uh, property and <laughs> franchise back in the day and uh, revisiting it or actually visiting most of it for the first time because, like I said, I, I ran away. So that is chrisandreggie.podbean.com, available everywhere you want to hear noise or anywhere you find noise anyway. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ace Comics. Speaking of noise... Use our link, uh, Amazon Music dot get Amazon Music dot com, get Amazon Music dot com, get Amazon Music dot com slash W two M Network for three thirty days of Amazon Music, and you can hear all the noise you want. You can hear uh, noise. Noise How about metal? that song that I was uh, I was just reciting earlier in the episode here to keep myself awake? You could do, do that. Have, do they have the Perfect Strangers theme song on Amazon Music? I'm sure they do. I'm sure there's oh, a compilation boy. of television theme songs that you, that is available. Now I am so happy I do the Dance of Joy. Na, da, 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 da. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, whatever, whatever you're into, if you want to hear the Godzilla soundtrack, if you want to hear the Godzilla King and the Monsters soundtrack that featured the cover of Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla by uh, Serge Chingren from uh, Sis- that's the one from System of a Down you can do that as well it's all there it's all there for you at AmazonMusic.com alright in the meantime because we are doing Godzilla and King Kong stuff this week 
Um, and I've changed everything up because what we were doing, we are no longer doing, and we're doing other things. But we did do, already, a review of Godzilla vs. Kong. We had ourselves a nice... Robert Winfrey and I had a nice argument, and Alexis Haina questioned her life choices. Um, tomorrow, speaking of li- questioning one's life choices, my, we were going to do a comic book, but I th- tossed that in the trash can, and I said, we're not doing that anymore. Instead, we're going to do a commentary... Because who doesn't love to hear the Rattlers and Broadcasting Gang and my children, who are just rising in popularity on YouTube, uh, talk over movies? So this being Godzilla vs. Kong week, we're going to talk over and provide commentary for the 1962 hit classic, King Kong vs. Godzilla. Are you excited, Chris, to hear that? There was already one of these? Yes, in 1962. Oh, Lord. Yes, sir. Um, but we're not done yet. Nope. We close out this week of Titan loveliness with Peter Jackson's, the aforementioned Peter Jackson's King Kong from 2005. We will be putting it on trial. I will be... What am I doing? I will be prosecuting it, and Sean will be defending it. So that'll be fun. And then uh, it's Flashback Friday, every Friday for the foreseeable future. The archives are open, and we are dumping, dumping, dumping all the way back from 2013 this week because hashtag Restore the Snyderverse, you you fans, you. We are releasing our 2013 review of Man of Steel. And then at WrestleMania weekend, oh boy, Podsman, yes. And we are Mm -hmm. celebrating WrestleMania night one by releasing our interview with comic creator uh, Ed Kuhn, Kuhnlin? Canel. Thank you. Canel. Uh, he wrote Invasion from Planet WrestleTopia. We had him on the show. He told us all about it. He did the plot synopsis for me because God knows I didn't want to. And we had a great discussion. That is coming your way April 10th. On April 11th, we're back into the archives again, and we are re-airing a show that myself, Gavin Napier, and Pat Mullen did. An entire show called In Defense of the Ultimate Warrior. Because we love the Ultimate Warrior on this network. I did not one, not two, but three different shows just on the Ultimate Warrior in the years that I was on Blog Talk Radio. And this was the first one. Can you believe it, Christian? Wonderful. Yes, sir. In the meantime, we did a whole shitload of Pacific Rim stuff last week. Uh, Chris was there to do Tales from Year Zero. We reviewed Pacific Rim the Black. Um, We released an old archive review of Tomahawk Oddfellows and then we reviewed the new Tomahawk to- uh, Tonic Immobility uh, we did a long road to ruin for the two Pacific Rim movies proper and then it was Flashback Friday as we released our 2013 review of Pacific Rim, one of the very first movie reviews we ever did on this network and myself and Chris Sheehan and Robert Winfrey did an alternative commentary for MLW Never Say Never Wrong Chris uh, did I say Sheehan? You did. I meant Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey. How do you do? You How go. do you do? How do you do? People might actually listen to it now. <laughs> oh, we love you, Chris. Sheehan. Yeah. All right, Chris, thank you for coming on. your sport tonight. Absolutely. We'll try to have you on for something that doesn't melt your brain next time. I promise. Something Fingers that might, crossed. Something that might make you laugh, might make you think. How about that? There we go. In the meantime, in between time, I'm Mark Radledge. Be well, be safe, and behave.